ready for the day two, like getting the, the days to go. And yes, okay, cool, more time's coming up for that. Thank you for being here with us this morning. It's a pleasure. And personally, very excited for the, the discussions that we have starting this morning. We'll be hearing about the public uh, Korea's public sector implementation of my data. And joining to share about this topic, we have Ji Young So, the director of the National Information Society Agency in Korea, and she's in charge of the public my data system and joining her we have Chris Lee who is the CTO of the public sector my data transformation group and also after this um, after the presentation we will have time for a Q&A and we have the message wall in the event app so if you think of questions during the presentation feel free to pop them in into the message wall you can do this probably with your name or anonymously and then after the presentation we will have some time for discussion. Please welcome Jiyoung So and Chris Lee. Preparing the documents 
and they had to had to scan and upload it. 18 certificates, certificates to apply, to apply online. And so it took five days average. And uh, to resolve this problem, uh, the funding agency, the funding agency request. Uh, I'm sorry. The, the the funding agency request to us to use the my data system. So after changing their system to my data, uh, people don't have to visit uh, any agencies for documents, and they don't have to scan or upload the certificates because. Uh, and Chris will explain how it works later. And it took only less than an hour for processing. <laughs> yeah, and is it to is it to apply for the service? So now uh, more than seventy agencies and companies change their has have changed their system to my data, and we offer certified services for uh, to create significant social values for citizens. And uh, fortunately, we don't have enough time to explain one by one, but I will explain a few months later at, at the booth. Yeah. Yeah. And we also linked 140 certificates um, as data source uh, issued by um, four, more than four agencies. Next, society. Um, actually, the my data, the concept of my data is not uh, familiar with Korea. And so we had uh, public participants challenges to ask people how should public my data change our way of living. And we also distribute guidelines for, uh, to explain the concept of my data for public. And also we um, distribute the step-by-step -step tutorials to explain how to use our system. The mobile app it shows what you need to click to to do send your data click your uh, to select your data. Uh, this is a concept that was created specifically for the citizens. Um, and so, in terms of society, we are not just trying to build a system, but we're actually really trying to make sure that people understand what it is, how it will change their lives, and why they should be excited about it. Now, in terms of BLTS, um, in Korea, there's a saying that goes, the law needs to come before the tech. If the, if the law is very specific and clear, then writing the tech for it should also be rather easy. So last year, we had some significant changes in the law. The public sector data portability rights of Korea were enacted last year. Now, there are two different laws. Um, so it says civil, pet civil petitions should be enacted. But this is actually, it should be given more as any request that a citizen makes to the government is considered a civil petition. Right? Now, October 21st and then December 9th. Right? So these are pretty recent. Right? And both of them are about the right to data portability for public sector personal data. Now the difference though here is for the Civil Petitions Treatment Act, because it's public services, that means the data is going from government to government. Now for the Electronic Government Act, it's going from government to private sector. So we have two different laws regarding this. Uh, maybe I want to try to make this a little bit more clear. So we have the data source, we have data using services, if the data source is in the public sector, this is always the case when we talk about public sector my data, for now. Now, I, I, I think I'm of the notion that we should expand this to include private sector data 
uh, uh, being managed by tools that the government makes. But for now, it's about public sector data. And that goes to these services. But the service can be, if it's in the public sector, then it's the Civil Petition Streaming Act that, that gets, uh, that's, that regulates it. Now, in the other case, if the, if the source goes to a private sector company, that is the Electronic Government Act. Now, yesterday during the Hub's workshop, uh, I learned something that I didn't that I didn't know before, and that was that the GDPR doesn't have specifics. Is what I was told. Now, this regulation here is something that I worked on uh, last year, and this is actually it's, it's, it became law that was passed. And in here, you can see the ecosystem rules. They, they talk about data providers, service providers, support providers, but it's not just about that, right? It also talks about what the approval criteria is, what type of system you need, it tells you when you should apply, and it tells you how long you will have to wait before you get a response back. And so these laws are very, very clear. It also provides forms that you can use to really apply. And so this is uh, something that I didn't realize was uh, as valuable as uh, as, as I think it is now. Okay, so in terms of tech, uh, there's just two points that I really want to make, right? And this is not one of the points. This is just, uh, this is just, this is a, a dream of mine, right? So this is the public my data system. I call it the public my data system for a reason. I didn't say it's the public my data operator. Now, the reason for that is because I don't think we qualify to be call, calling ourselves a my data operator yet. But we have a very, very strong interest in becoming a 2023 my data operator. Right? And we're working hard to make the changes that we need to so that we can get approved and have a my data operator for every single citizen in Korea. All right, this is the first technical thing that I think would interest you. Right? So, we have data minimization before sharing. Right? So when you, I think, in most cases, the company that's requesting the data needs to request for the minimum amount. Now, whether that always works in practice, we don't know. But in Korea, what we're doing in the public sector is, we're asking these services to prove that they need the data before we register it. Right? So that's why we only have 35 services as of now. These 35 services have proven that data that they're requesting is the minimum amount. And so citizens know for sure that they are, uh, that their data is being handled trustworthily. Now in order to create these bundled services, the bundled data sets, and share the minimal data, this data set doesn't come from just one certificate, right? It comes from several certificates. And what that means is, for every single service that we have, in order to ensure data middle, uh, minimization, we need to manually select the data items that are needed and create this bubble data set before we share it. Now, I think this is a great concept, but can this be fully automated? Because I think it can be, I just don't know how to do it. I feel like it should be, we should be able to do it, but uh, I'm still trying to solve it. And so if anyone here has some ideas, like even you know, just a little bit of automation would really make this go much, much easier. Because we are, right now, the speed that, at which we are creating services, maybe about 10, uh, 15 services per year. And that's not fast enough to, uh, to, to cover the 3,000, 4,000 public services that we have. But this is the second point that I wanted to make. Um, so normally, if you have a data source, the data source is the one that provides the API. Okay? And the API is something that data user service can access to request for data if the individual has given them prior consent. I think this is uh, the case of most in most data transfers right now. Now, 
the, the right to data portability in Korea can actually be translated as the right to, to demand data transfer. It's, a, it's not the right to request, it's the right to demand. And so the people at the Ministry of Interior and Safety asked me, okay, what happens if the person wants to send it, but they can't? Uh, because the recipient doesn't know, um, doesn't know how to receive it. Right? And, and the answer that they came up with was this extra API on the server side, right? Now, this was something that to me, like it worried me at first. I was really worried and I didn't know if this was a good idea. I talked to some experts. I think uh, I talked to many. Uh, I talked to Adrian Gropper. I talked to, I forget, Robert, James Robert, the guy from SAP. Um, and he was the one who told me that, okay, there are two ways to share data. There's consent, and there's initiation. Now, this is, I think, um, this, is, this was the point where I, where I realized, okay, so actually what the government was trying to do is add this option of sending data by initiation as well as consent, and we have this right now. We have this, uh, it, it's, it's still in the elementary stages, but um, there are amazing things that you can do with it, right? Now, for instance, for instance, if you think about the right to be forgotten, right, how do you tell someone to erase your data? Right? I mean, you, you, you can't tell, unless they ask, should I erase your data? Right? In, or, in order to tell them, like, erase my data right now, you need to have them to have this API. Right? And public sector, my data in Korea, they're making this a requirement. And this is, uh, I could go so deep into this right now, but I think in terms of time, I, I should, but we, we, are have, we have a booth uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. and we'd really like to see you there. Uh, we have, we had a hard time turning this into a, a 17 minute presentation. We have more material for you if you need. Um, and, and also I would love to talk to, the, to talk to you about this. So yeah, just quickly, you know, so the post request goes and then you know, it's, uh, it comes back. Now, what this means is, Data using services must accept incoming requests. Now, I think for the most part, if you're a data using service, you would welcome this, right? But maybe there are some outliers, I don't know. Right? To me, it felt like, uh, it felt like it could be dangerous. Um, if you have any thoughts on this, please, please do share. It, it, would, it, would, it would really, really help us. What source I got, right? Okay, so to end, since December 9th, which was when we enacted the new Electronic, data, uh, Electronic Government Act, we have had 35 registered services, 140 digital cert uh, certificates available. We have trained government officials, a thousand of them, right? And this is like, this is not uh, something that government agencies can ignore. It's mandatory. It, it's, it's in the law. They have to, like, a thousand of them. Now, we've also issued 60 million certificates so far. But like I said, we're still far from being a MyData operator, uh, but uh, I, I believe, I, I, I'm, I'm determined to take a step. 2023, I hope. Um, maybe some of you know, in 2022, May, we had a new president. This is a new president. My dad voted for him. Uh, I, I wasn't so fond of him, but then he came out with these new policies. The new president means new policies, right? But his policies, to me, were wonderful. My data rights for, for bad services for non-human entities. What does this mean? Okay, if you search for an article that Yogi uh, Quickla wrote on our data, I think it was in 2017, and she talks about not just uh, like, like the next step of my data, right? And I think this is this is kind of like going that step, right? Rights for non -human. So we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with companies, uh, legal entities, and we're going to allow them to use their company data in the way that people use their personal data. That's on that's on the menu right now. I spoke to Alan Mitchell from Midex and Bo Harold from the steering committee. And both of them, to me, 
I was so surprised. They, they both mentioned this power of attorney, granting the power of attorney, especially to, towards end of life. Right? To be able to do that with your data, to give power of attorney to your data, and not just to one person, to be able to give it to different people to manage different parts of your lives. Now, this is something that was, uh, uh, that at, at the very least, Alan Mitchell and Bo Harold thought was really important. And this is on the menu for Korea as well. So I think that was it. And the last one here is public private partnerships. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a government official, she is, uh, but I think working together, uh, we, the, the best thing about working with the government, I think, is it's not about, it's, you can't convince them by finding out how much money they have, right? The, the only way you can convince them is by telling them how, how this is going to make people's lives better, right? And so I think this is, uh, to me, um, it's, it's a really exciting time. Uh, this is Korea right now. And like I said, 2 p.m. to 3.30, we'll be in a booth, I think, in the vast group. I'm not mistaken. But I hope to see you there. And yes, I think so. Okay. Okay. Right. Workshop. I think we're just going to be in the booth, but okay. please find us if you have questions. Uh, any questions right now? Or, or is, is it time? It's time, actually. Okay. We're over yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, so if you can. Thank you for coming. I love the time. I'm sure I know you can sit here. Thank you. All right, so next up on 